What's up, everybody? So next podcast, we talk about the UFC 291, uh, the rising, super rising coming up soon. A lot of predictions. uh, So check it out. ハッチとあり仲間地で生まれて移り住んだ新宿で育ちこの町で起きたこれまでの俺たちのここまでの恋たちは本の末たちの口試されたいちいちただしてきた過ちただしてきた過ちただしてきた過ちただしてきた過
I'm already up to 100 consecutive push-ups and 50 consecutive sit-ups, and then I do my the obliques, the 30 of the obliques, the 30 of the lower abs. So yeah, so feeling good, man. I mean, I actually could probably push more than 100 right now, but it would be real uncomfortable. I could probably do 120 right now, push-ups, mm -hmm. but it would be real uncomfortable. So yeah. to to keep it something that I don't try to avoid doing, I try to keep it where it's still something that's not like super strenuous for me. And keeping it at 100 is something that I struggle a little bit in the last 10, but I still don't dread it at all. But if I were to think of pushing myself to 120, I could. But then it, the last 30 be horrible. So mm -hmm. I I'd probably like would dread it a little more. So, yeah. So just keeping it at a moderate increase, gradually increasing the, the reps and mm -hmm. adding some exercises in. So feeling good, man. I mean, it's, it's to a point where it's such a routine that um, if I don't, do it, I feel weird. Like, mm. oh shit, I gotta do it. Like, some one time I did it at 12 midnight because I was so busy during the day going to events and stuff. And I came home and I said, oh shit, I didn't do it. And it's yeah. kind of like, ah, oh, it's so late. I mean, I'll just get up early and do it tomorrow morning. But it's like that, that, that ring goes in my head, like non negotiable. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, fuck, let's do it. So I did it before I sleep. I just go do my push ups, jump in the ice bath, go to sleep. And they say not to do the ice bath right before you go to sleep because you, it drops your body temperature super fast. But fuck, I sleep good. I don't know. I don't know why they say that. But I sleep super good after doing the ice bath. Yeah, but you're the vampire, right? Yeah. So, so you didn't used to sleep. <laughs> your sleeping pattern is different to everyone else's. So. True, uh, true, true. No, I think it's a really cool concept, though. I think it, um, it's something that I want to take on board soon just because I even saw you said about how with like your mom... Um, she had said that like she wants to do it, but it it would just get too hard. And you kind of said like start low, start really easy. So then it's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the so, trick to it. If you're starting up, is make it something that you enjoy. That way, you it's easier to do it every day to a point where it becomes a routine. You, it's mm -hmm. the, the the consistency is real important to turn it into a routine. And if you you try to push yourself too hard and you dread it that routine is going to be hard to get going. Mm, yeah, it's so true. It's, it's, but it's like you said, if it's a non-negotiable, it's just like that thing that forms part of your day. It's like me, you have to, you have to get up with your kid, right? Like, like you, have, you have to give him milk or, whatever, or breakfast, you know, it just becomes part of that thing that one of those things that you have to do. So I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I think it's a good, good one to incorporate, but it's just working out what to do. But yeah, good advice. Hope other people take it up and, if you, if you are doing it, put it in the comments. It'd be cool to hear if anyone else is is, is started. Well, if you're gonna start, everyone, I think everyone should start. Mm. Everyone should start. Just do it. Even if you do and do, say do ten push-ups, five sit-ups, and five squats, mm. and just do that every day. And then you're gonna be like, that's so fucking easy. It's ridiculous. And then you'll just have to add stuff. Cool. So we we we're gonna go through a number of different things. Um, we you know, different topics and stuff, but I was, it's a big, big weekend for MMA, like super yeah, excited. I'm excited. Big weekend for combat sports in general, right? You know, this big boxing fight. There was a big boxing fight in Japan with, um, in a way, no relation. Yeah. Uh, and we had, a, we had a free download. We had a free app. We could just download the app and it was free. So I watched um, it here. Nice. What was the, how was big is Japanese boxing? Huge. It's huge. I think they filled the Tokyo Dome. That's Whoa. eighty thousand arena. Yeah, you know, eighty thousand seat arena. Shoot, I did not realize that. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't really yeah. keep up too much with the scene, but I know in a way is like the big guy, right? Like in terms of well, boxing out. in Japan, boxing has a lot of good fighters. Yeah, they yeah. had a lot of good world champions, so boxing is pretty huge because of that. Mm. You think it's more popular than MMA right now? Oh, I don't know. Right now, maybe because of Inoue, yes. Yeah. Maybe more yeah. casual people are aware of him than perhaps some of the... Yeah, you um, know, boxing is uh, is has such a longer, a much longer history than MMA. Mm. So that, like you say, boxing, any old lady, any old man on the street, they'll know what boxing is. Oh, yeah, boxing. Mm. They've, and they've all watched boxing before, regardless mm. if it was on TV or some event. You say MMA... Half the old people, older generation, don't know what MMA is yet. Still to this day, so yeah, yeah, it's a bit like 
a little bit like that over here in the UK and probably a bit like that in the US as well, right? Where boxing's just yeah. got that that history. Um, yeah, yes. And probably the same with like where you've got, you know, if I say like Tyson Fury is probably more popular than any MMA star, maybe by Conor McGregor. So, um, you know, Tyson Fury is a much bigger name than a uh, Tom Aspinall. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah John even, a, even a John Jones, yeah, definitely. So. Well, no Tyson Fury, but not John Jones. Exactly, yeah. So. <clears throat> cool but anyway yeah as i was saying it's big big weekend for combat sports um so before we do a couple of predictions um we'll you know we'll do a probably a bit of a review of some of these shows as well um should we start with ufc anything you want you okay. call the shots all right so we'll start with the main event um for the vacant bmf title <laughs> but before we, so while we do that i wanted to get your thoughts on the bmf title and what you think about it right it's not an official recognized title in the sense of you know you there's rankings for it in that sense but what do you feel about the concept i think it's i think it's ridiculous i mean it's a cool aspect where it kind of adds a little bit of a incentive or a little bit extra excitement for you know the fans and the fighters but it just doesn't make no sense you know the baddest motherfucker is like in what mm. all these guys i mean you would think the baddest motherfucker is a champion right I mean, unless there was a different rule set. I mean, if they if they had, I feel if they had a, B, a real BMF, they would have they should have growing shots, eye gouging. Mm. Yeah, that would be a BMF. Be you cool. got the same rule set, same ring. Yeah. I mean, so what 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 makes it that this guy is a bad motherfucker if he gets gets kicked to his get gets his ass kicked by this guy? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Poirier and Gaethje, if anything, those are bad motherfuckers. So yeah. it's kind of like, wow, that's a pretty good uh, like yeah. storyline for BMF. But, you know, as, I mean, everyone who's beat Gaethje before, even everyone who's beat Poirier before, is also a bad motherfucker, right? Mm. Yeah, so, you know, for me, I, it's just, I think it's just a um, PR ploy. Yeah, marketing. And yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily uh, think it's like super awesome or anything. I just, it's kind of ridiculous, a little stupid. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of don't even really pay attention to it. BMF belt, it doesn't really matter to me. It's more the fuck the Poirier and Gaethje, man. Whew. That's a fucking awesome fight, to be fair. <laughs> like it's, wow. uh, so I'll put you on the spot. Who's winning the fight? Um, Actually, it's actually a toss-up. Mm -hmm. But I got to go with someone. One of my favorites is Gaethje. I just mm -hmm. like how that guy's... You know, they're both gentlemen. They're both gangsters. But I think Gaethje just takes too, so much chances. It's just such an exciting fighter. Like, you know, they call him the highlight reel. Yeah, exactly what he is. I mean, Poirier is also a highlight reel. But I, I think Poirier is more, um, he's more calculated. So he doesn't take stupid risks as much as Gaethje does. Mm -hmm. So I think... Um, I just like Gaethje, so I I would sway more wanting him to win. I'd pretty much be happy either way because both are awesome champions. Mm -hmm. you know, both awesome guys, so good representatives of the sport. But I don't know, I just something about Gaethje. I, I like that guy's attitude. I like the guy's demeanor. I like his uh, everything pre fight, post fight, classy, good guy, you know. So. Mm -hmm. I'm just yeah, pretty man. much picking. It's a it's a it's a fifty fifty pick them, man. Mm. And uh, I is. just pick who I like better. <laughs> you pick who you like. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. It's fifty fifty, right? It's super hard this one to pick because Dustin yeah. has a lot of good tools. Then so does Gaethje. Like Gaethje's leg kicks are something else as well, right? You know, for that reason, I'm probably going Gaethje. I think I'd probably go. I don't know. I think he'll just work on it with those leg kicks, and it's like you say, you just kind who of. <sighs> who has a better stamina? Ah, oh. I'd probably say Gaethje. Just. And doesn't Gaethje isn't Gaethje training in high altitude? Uh... Or was it Corey altitude originally? It was Gaethje that's in high altitude. Yeah, I think so because he's with. Usman and 
Rose. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think it's high altitude. So he would be acclimated to it. Yeah. That I think yeah. is gonna play a big role being being in Utah. Mm. That would definitely be affecting fighters. So and I think poor yeah, Poirier is not acclimated to it. So he I I I read I saw in the embedded that he went up early to get oh, adjusted really? to it. So I think that might be a huge uh a huge yeah. point in uh in Gaethje because mm -hmm. Gaethje's acclimated to it. It's almost like when uh Kane Velasquez fought um um Wordham. Mm. And he pretty much just lost because he the air was too thin for him. He didn't get acclimated to it. Yeah, God, that was such a long time ago. Vadum and uh, Kane. Yeah. Vadum and, uh, yeah. Vadum and uh, mm -hmm. Kane Velasquez, yeah. Yeah, I remember the altitude played a big, big factor in that, right? Yeah, that did. Um, so the co-main event is That's Jan, Jan Blokovic versus Alex Pereira. Which is Alex I, I would have to go. Hmm. I would have to go at Jan because there's not going to be that much of a size uh, difference for um, Pera, like when he fights Izzy, and hmm. I think you know Jan how he took Izzy apart by taking him down. I think that's what Jan will do. I think he'll eventually end up taking uh, Pera down and winning it on the ground. I I, I predict a, a very uneventful fight. Really? Wow. Yeah, because of that. Because of that. Because you want to strike with him only to take him down. I feel. I believe. That's the sensible move, right? Because Pereira is dangerous as hell. Um, but Jan did say he might, he wants to strike with him too, yeah? But you don't know how yeah. much that is, you know, to set him Bait up or, you know. Mm. I'm going to pick Pereira. <laughs> Just because the guy's so explosive and it kind of comes out of nowhere, I could kind of see he that. He has that there. one punch knockout chance. Yeah. I'll be interested to see if that translates to 205, but the guy's just huge anyway. So it's like. Um, yeah, I think he's like a heavyweight. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a 20 pound jump up, though, isn't it? It's a big jump to a weight class. Maybe I should pick Jan. <laughs> <laughs> That's your isn't that natural weight class. Who Jan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's moving up to Jan's weight class. And if and if you remember but when, that crazy, he's gonna cut weight. <laughs> you, yeah, that's true, right? So there is that. <laughs> but when but when Jan for Izzy, I always thought Izzy looks like a pretty big middleweight. Jan just looked massive against Izzy. So I'm like, yeah. Mm. Oh, I wonder if Jan's a big boy too, then, huh? Yeah, I think he's pretty big for two hundred five. Hmm. I'll I'll go with Pereira just so we can have a bit of a difference there. <laughs> but that is, I I like that matchmaking though. It's a cool fight. It's a cool introduction for yeah. two or five. Um, the other fights on the card we've got Stephen Wonderboy Thompson versus Michael Pereira. Isn't the whole card pretty damn good? The whole card's pretty good. Yeah, I think the whole card is good, man. Yeah, Wonder Boy Pereira, man. I think Wonder Boy will just uh, out tech him. Yeah. And I think uh, if Wonder Boy can bring it into the later rounds, Pereira does tend to slow down later mm -hmm. on in the rounds because because he's so explosive in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would I would have to if I had to pick, I would pick Wonder Boy. How about you? Um, I would probably pick Wonder Boy as well, just because it's like you say. I feel like. <clears throat> he might be a little bit better with the range and we did yeah. see that that history in Pereira where sometimes he'll throw too much crazy shit and just be yeah. less explosive um, what's interesting though is they were talking about uh, Michael Venom Page MVP from my side of the world one of the most exciting Bellator fighters uh, is now potentially you know well he's a free agent for sure right so and he was there at last week's UFC. So I'm hoping that they can get a deal done and bring him in because that would, he's. Yeah, there's he's, rumors. Isn't there rumors about him going to the UFC? Yeah. 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 And there's rumors about him maybe fighting the winner of this fight because of how they've got their similar sort of styles. Him right? and Wonder would be a crazy karate against karate. Huh? 
Yeah. Well, they're from this. They got apparently got the same management, so I don't know whether it would happen or not. But. Um, oh. mm. But yeah, MVP one of my favorite fighters because he's just something else. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm. Uh, I hope he does get signed. He hasn't had the best luck recently with some of his fights, but I would ignore that. Just oh, bring him yeah. in. You have yeah, seen some boxing. Yeah, yeah, and he did the whole bare knuckle thing, right, with um, Mike Perry. Um, I hope they bring him in though, because UFC doesn't tend to sign as many sort of established guys as they used to, right? They used to. I mean, they did obviously they did like Michael Chandler, but he's like one of the few that I can remember. Recently, it's just been like you go on Dana White's Contender Series, you go come up that way. Yeah, yeah. You, you they'd normally get the talent a lot younger before they've had a bit of a career, so. Well, he did bring back Kevin Lee also, yeah. True, true. They brought back Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee, yeah. Hopefully they bring an MVP. Uh, We've also got Tony Ferguson versus Bobby Green. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. Mm. Both guys like Bobby Green's super explosive, but I think as far as um, overall, you know, grappling and experience-wise, I got to go with Tony Ferguson. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. We split again. I'm going with Bobby Green. <clears throat> I, I just think Tony Ferguson's had one too many. I don't know. Some of the losses he's had recently kind of looked like a guy on maybe on the way out a little bit. Not to be disrespectful, but I don't know. I'm not sure he. he... Well, I just watched the embedded, though. He's like um, changed up his routine. He's put on more muscle. He said he feels like he's in the best shape he's ever been in. So. I swear he said that last fight, though. <laughs> I guess uh, Chandler. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I did hear that before, but you never know, right? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, and then I think final card on the main is going to be... Kessia Colin. Yeah, Mike, Michael Kiesa versus Kevin Holland. Yeah. Um, I think Kessia is more of a well-rounded fighter. His ground's super sick. But I, I like Holland because he has that freaking. Uh, I can't ever forget when he knocked out um, Jacqueler from the guard position. Oh yeah, that was sweet. Yeah, that was unreal. I mean, you don't see that happen much, but Holland does that, you know. So yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'm going on the limb. I, I say odds is with Chessia, but I'll go on a limb and I I pick Holland. Yeah, I am. Um, I agree. I'm definitely going Holland. Like. That Jacare knockout was crazy. Um, but I think for yeah. me with Holland is because he's been one of those guys that will literally fight anywhere, anytime, anyone. Yeah. I feel like he's got so much experience now to the point where at yeah. some point yeah. it pays off, right? It has to, like, in my eyes, like the fact that he has, and he's been a bit of a break. His last fight was he beat Ponzinibbio. He knocked him out and that was in April. Okay, it's July. It's not that big of a break, but... but um, <laughs> You remember he had that war with Stephen Thompson as well. For, yeah, just look yeah, at yeah. Tamayev, Timmy's, Alex Oliveira, Marvin Vittori, Derek Brunson, Jack Ray, like Joaquin Buckley. Yeah, like he's fought the who's who, yeah, in the division. Literally. So I think I think that will pay off in this one. Not that Kiesa doesn't have like shitloads of experience, but uh, I'm gonna yeah. pick pick Kevin Holland for sure on that one. So that's kind of the UFC main card yeah, and pretty some much. of the, the big fights that we got going on. We also have a awesome, awesome, awesome Super Ryzen and Bellator kind of super show. Yeah. And to I'll that. be honest, like the, the, the hype for this one has kind of hit me this week. Like I hadn't really been thinking about it too much. And then there was the announcement that AJ was out, right? And then yeah. Barbaras, Scott Coker coming together to bring it like awesome announcements where you've got you've got Satoshi Souza, who's the rising that's lightweight a, champion. That's a, that's an interesting one, man. That's Beast Move stepping in to the tournament as well. It's not just like it's like one fight. If he wins, he's he's in that tournament. So he's carrying on and move on to the semifinals. Um, and then you've also, yeah. they just added another fight. They thought, hey, fuck it. Well, let's bring in another Pitbull brother. Always great to watch. Uh, and then put him against Chihiro. And you know this firsthand from, I think you said when you were doing the Hawaii tryouts, Chihiro just like, 
he gives it his all, man. He he's just game. So I'm excited to see that fight. I think that's an awesome addition. But After his well, last performance, I, I was kind of like, ah, oh, why are you giving him another chance so soon? But Pitbull isn't a submission artist. No. And Chiquito is kind of gangster, like he'll throw down with people. So yeah, yeah. I think it'll I I I what is your prediction? Or my prediction is I think Pitbull's gonna win, but I think um Chihiro's gonna if he can do it right, he'll gain a lot of fans. He can show his grit. Yeah. We're going straight to it. Okay, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm probably <laughs> going pitbull as well. Only yeah. The only thing is that the recent Pitbull hasn't been as exciting, right, as some of his other fights because he lost to Sergio when he moved down in weight. And then the AJ fight was a bit mm, tentative. And then if you remember, he had the Kleber fight as well where I didn't – I don't know. We, we watched that live, and I wasn't that impressed with Pitbull's performance. I say it like GSP. Yeah, I <laughs> wasn't impressed with your performance. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I don't know. It depends what Pitbull shows up. I think I really hope we get I, the old Pitbull. If the shittiest like, Pitbull shows up, he'll beat Chihiro. Chihiro's not on that level. You're probably right. I, I do think you're yeah. right in terms of it is a is quite a big skill difference. Um, yeah, their experience, skill, power. Mm. But let's see. Let's all, see. All That's a fun fight. Only to thing make, Chihiro has is a bomb. Mm. But if he has a good showing, it might make people forget that loss to, to Kleber anyway. If he can actually yeah. have a good showing, even if he loses, then let's see what happens. But be cool I if love his game. I love his game. I love his game. Because went to him and asked him, and he was like, what is he going to do? Say no? He said, hell yeah, let's do it. He's so he didn't really have like a full camp for it. Yeah, he's crazy. Like, and he's I a rate- good kid, too. A humble kid. Yeah, I rate him a lot. He should get a lot of respect from the fans. That was the thing that I really liked, the fact that obviously the promoters have worked really hard. I think they said they found out Sunday that that's when the injury was happening. And then credit to the fighters for just like stepping up on such short day notice. You don't see this that often. I kind of tweeted about it. I said that they could have done nothing. (laughs) Instead, they gave us more, right? They got a replacement and an additional fight. So I really think that... They, they showed the fans a lot of respect with that. Not, not just the fighters, but the promoters as well. So that was cool. Um, but let's talk about some of these fights. It starts with Bellator. Kyoji Haraguchi against Makoto Shinru for the vacant Bellator MMA flyweight title. How do you see that one going up? I don't know um, Haraguchi's opponent that well. Did we? I haven't watched it. I know he's a champion of something. Was it deep or? I was, yeah, deep and something else. Yeah, I think he's a champ of something, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I like Cody Gucci. It's one of those I dislike the guy, and I don't know the other guy. So <laughs> is deep and CFFC. Oh, I don't one know, of those know that. Super small, like uh, independent. Uh, do you know what? I'm actually going to pick Shinru. Because I think A, he's looked really good in his past fights. Um, but also, the cracks are showing in the, in the Gooch, in Horiguchi, I think. Because if you remember, when he fought Kintaro, he got dropped. He got knocked out by Sergio Pettis. So he got knocked down by Kintaro, which I thought was uh, like a bit crazy, considering Kintaro's like, not that well-known of a guy, right? I was quite surprised. Uh, for for that to happen with Gooch. So I think that maybe Shimru coming in, being a lot quicker, could could land something. He's got he's got good striking as well. So uh, I'm gonna go with a, a generational shift. But what's strange is that this rising fighter will now be like a Bellator champion. So I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of crazy, yeah. Because mm. Haraguchi was already uh a Bellator fighter, right? He had a Bellator contract. And yeah. it's almost like they're kind of looking past that and they just think that he'll win and get the belt and it'll be a Bellator fighter. But I think I think Shinru's going to do it. And then you're going to have like this awkward thing of, <laughs> of rising fighters. Well, well, it's, it's the same way with Archuleta's fight too, you know? True, 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 yeah. yeah. Kubo yeah. Archuleta, that's the same thing. That's a, 
you have a Bellator guy come in and take the rising belt, possibly. Mm. It seems like Bellator wants to do more shows in Japan anyway. And then maybe have the a... fighters, probably, you know. Yeah. Rampage is here again. I saw. I saw. Are you going to see him? <laughs> uh, he actually messaged me wanting to train, but uh, I, I, want, I, I asked him when, and then he, I think they found somewhere else to train, so it's kind of good. He's got, he's got his whole family sure. here. So. He's probably super, yeah, he got his whole family. He got his mm. Japanese kids taking him around, so mm. probably not going to see him this trip, but mm. I'm not going to the fights either, so. Yeah. Well, I saw um, AJ, because obviously he was here probably to corner AJ as part of it, right? Like last time. I think he and doesn't need corner Ochoa too. Maybe. I keep seeing them pictured together. So maybe he will be at the fights. Yeah, I think last, the last time, the rising, uh, didn't he? Oh, he cornered. I thought he, he cornered Ochoa No, he cornered AJ. Oh, we saw him when he cornered. Oh, okay, okay. But I do keep seeing him in pictures with Ochoa So maybe he will be in this corner. I don't know. Um. But yeah, so, uh, but I, but the looks of it, AJ wants to fight on New Year's Eve, so uh, Ooh. he might be back for New Year's. So. Um, what else we got? So the other fight I mentioned before was uh, now we've got Satoshi Souza filling in, taking on uh, the other Pitbull brother, Patriki. How do you see that fight going? Um. Who, who was that again? So it's uh, so AJ's out this fight. It was going to be oh, AJ. Sposa, I know. Okay, that one, yeah. Whew. Whew, I, uh, man. This is a hard one. I just, I would have to go at the pit bull again. Mm. Just because uh, experience wise, uh, I think Sosa's super good. He, he can strike and his ground is super good, but. I just think that uh, experience wise, Souza just doesn't have enough experience yet. Mm-hmm. It's like a new, it's almost like a new boy fighting a, a seasoned veteran that's still at his peak. Mm-hmm. So, even though he's going to have a full camp and Souza wouldn't have had a full camp, I think I'm going to pick Souza. And the reason is, is because I feel like if Patriki was training for AJ, then maybe submissions weren't the highest on the list. Whereas Souza mm. had such good jujitsu that maybe he can catch something. So maybe it's a bit wishful thinking. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Souza. So right. we'll see how that one goes. Um so those are the two big fights on the Bellator card. We have also got Super Ryzen. So, Super Ryzen is headlined by Mikulu Asakura versus Vugar Karamov, a fight that I have been looking forward to since it got announced, a fight that I never thought we'd see happen, but we are. How do you see this one going? I got to go with Mikula. I just, Mikula's just such a, um, his timing, I think we could have, uh, Vugar is uh, strong, aggressive, which I think will play into Mikula's game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm interested to see him face like such a good wrestler like Vugar because he's he creates a whole new barrel of problems that I don't think Mikula's ever had before. Really, um, if you look at his, you know, the the last people he's fought, um, I probably am going to go Asakura as well, just because I think like the the fight IQ will take a. I think he yeah. might have the edge. But what what do you think about this fight being? for Kleber's belt, technically. So Kleber lost it on the scales, and now these guys have a chance to win the 145. Uh, I, I think it's, I, I, I felt it was a little sudden, just throwing it together like that. Mm-hmm. But I figured because it's Mikuda, they, they, they eventually want him to be the champion, I think. Mm-hmm. And in a storyline, like all promoters are thinking, it's a pretty good storyline, you know, Clever lo- loses it, loses his belt to a weight miss. Mikuda takes his belt, or or whoever takes the belt, and he comes back to reclaim his belt. You know, that's kind of like a nice storyline. Yeah, you got to think that if um, if Mikuda wins, then 
uh, they'll do the the Kleber fight probably on New Year's Eve is what I'm guessing. Oh, However, yeah, sure. if Vuga wins though, you might get your first international Ryzen show. You might get Ryzen Azerbaijan because recently I saw Saki Kabara, Shingo, they were all in Azerbaijan talking with the government. Like they're always there. <laughs> they seem pretty well engraved. So if you've got a champion, you know, it kind of makes sense to do a show over there. So won't they have two champions if this guy wins, beats Mikura? Uh, what, Musayev, the other guy? Musayev, yeah. And then this, he, this guy Volga will be the next one. So he would have, Musayev would have been the first one, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So they have, they have, they have two rising champions in a... Uh, former, because if you remember, yeah. I think Musayev lost to Souza, didn't he? He lost... Oh, did he? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he tapped oh, it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. There's been a lot of fights. Oh, wow. So, because Musab's now in Bellator, and um, but he's fighting on that Bellator card, so he's fighting in Japan. So it'd be good to see him again. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think uh, it's kind of win-win for Ryzen. Whoever, obviously, if Asakura wins, that's a big one. It, it would make sense having him as a champion. But you know, even if he loses, you know, I think people. We'll still look at it and go, oh, Vuga was that guy. He was that good. I don't think it will hurt Asakura as much. But I'm guess my guess is if Asakura loses, they do the, the Ren fight. They do the Hiromoto Ren and Asakura fight on New Year's Eve. If Asakura wins, they do the Kleber fight on New Year's Eve. So they probably pretty much got probably like a, a guaranteed main event <laughs> regardless of the outcome unless he gets injured. So Yeah, yeah, that'd be interesting. Mm. Other big fights on the card, we've got um, Ogi Kubu, uh, Ogi Kubo stepping in for um, Kai Asakura. Kai's injured again, unfortunately. Um, and so Ogi Kubo's taking on one Archuleta. How do you see that fight going? Archuleta, 100%. I don't mm -hmm. think it'll be that competitive. I think I feel Archuleta will walk over. I kind of with you on that. It's a shame to say, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty much. As soon as the fight was announced, I was I was a little bit bummed just because I feel like Ogi Kubo hasn't had the best showings recently. And whilst he was that big tournament champion, right? He had the you know, he won the, the tournament. His performances lately haven't been that great. But then I was thinking about it, who there isn't really anyone they could put in against Archuleta that So he kind of stepped up for the for the promotion. Yeah. So So yeah. It's in, in a way, that's kind of cool of him, but ah, it's just a totally different level, I feel. Mm. Hey, maybe we'll be wrong, but uh, I, I forgot that he actually has a win over the current UFC flyweight champion, Pantoja. Years ago, back on like an Ultimate Fighter series, Ogi Kubu beat Pantoja. Oh, wow. So he's got the um, history, but, but you never know. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. <laughs> He just hasn't been looking good at all. Nah, the yeah, the Horaguchi fight wasn't great, was it? And uh, uh, we got Seika Izawa versus Claire Lopez. I'm looking forward to that. That's a cool fight. Yeah, yeah. Claire Lopez was the one that demolished Reyna in that in that fight in the cage. Yeah. The one that that was the same event Siyoshi was fighting. I think. Yeah, did you have, yeah, yeah. Did you see that fight? I think you did. No, I just saw the highlight of it. And Reyna mm -hmm. kind of got broken on the ground. She got dropped standing, right? Yeah, yeah. And then she kind of got ground and pounded on the ground, yeah. So. And then the submission. So. What, what's your prediction it's for this a fight? Big test, I, think. I think it'll be a big test. Mm. Is it a title match? Um, yes, it is, yeah, because they're doing free title oh, fights. Wow. Mm. Oh, shit. Rising might lose all their belts. Ooh. All their belts might be taken away abroad, man. Oh, scary. That is kind of crazy, yeah. Yeah. Do you think she does it? Do you think she takes the belt? I don't know enough of her at all. Mm. I didn't really watch that fight, but I know mm. that he's all she's hard, she's she's good. So it's yeah, young and good, but I think mentally just that's the question mark. Mm. But as far as tech technical wise, toughness, she's there, man. But mentally, I think she's young and not as much experience. So I don't know, but I don't know. I don't. I really don't know what this other opponent is about. I don't. I didn't really watch the fight with Reina. So yeah. So Claire Lopez. You know, she's, right. like, 
She's um she fights in Combate Global. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're like the promotion mm, in Mexico. Yeah. Um, and she's actually from France. Um, I think she trains here in the UK. She's really good, but I do think Izawa is probably going to get the submission because Izawa is like a. I think she's like Izawa's a legit, good. Yeah, with some of the stuff she does. So, but I think that'll be a really fun fight though because you got that. Yeah, that, we'll be. I'm looking forward to that fight. Lopez will like threaten with a stand up, so that's going to be good. Um, the other one I'm looking forward to is Takizawa versus Ota. Uh, Ota is the standout wrestler. Uh, wrestler against striker. Yeah. How do you think that one goes? Ota is quite new in his career. Yeah. Um... Ah, shit. R- R- Ota's wrestling is really good. And he showed a, he had a good performance in the last fight. Mm-hmm. And Taki, I don't know. Taki's out. Has he been winning? Not really, yeah. He hasn't been doing well either, yeah. Well, he he had that loss, didn't he? On when was it? Yeah, he lost the in a way. Naoki in a way. Um that was on New Year's Eve. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and then he lost to Kai as well in the Bantamweight tournament. He so he's mm-hmm. coming off two losses. And I don't think he's going to beat Ota. Ota, like you said, he looked really good in that last fight. And he's always looked really good. But, like, sometimes it was just the opponents. Ota had really tough matchmaking from the beginning. They gave him Tokoro. Right, right. <laughs> then they gave him uh, Yuta Kubo, who he beat. Uh, he's fought Matoya, and he lost to Matoya. And we all know how good Matoya can be. So, kind of fought really good people. Um, but I, I think he'll... Yeah, he had really good fighters, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's because he's the silver medalist, right, in wrestling. So they they, they don't treat him lightly. So. Big I, I think he can do. I think he can beat Takizawa. But yeah, I don't know. I, I if I I just I I just I don't know. I just felt like Ota's real flat. He's a he he's a good wrestler, but his uh, he doesn't have enough of a game beyond wrestling. His striking, his, his his submissions aren't there. So, you know, I, I, that, the only thing with that is Takizawa's strength is his standing, and it, that can be nullified with a takedown. Yeah, it was that. So I, I, would, I would pick Ota, too, and a boring, very boring win. You say that, but if you remember, when he fought Kuromoto, he didn't, like, stamp on his face or something crazy like that. <laughs> it was, I'm pretty yeah, sure it was, yeah. like, a soccer kick or something. Um, it looked awesome, and it was a pretty big knockout. So let's see, let's see what happens. But I got, I got high hopes for Shinobu Ota. I think he's gonna be something else. I think he's got the the he's got the athleticism right to do big things, and he seems to be mixing it up. So let's see. I I think he's got an exciting career ahead of him anyway. Yeah, he does. He does. Mm. Which show are you more looking forward to, UFC or Ryzen? UFC. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm more looking forward to Ryzen and Bellator. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, UFC, I'm looking forward to the main event. And then the other fights are good. It's like a good card. But I don't know. I feel like right, the Ryzen Bellator stuff, um, maybe because uh, I can watch uh, it live. In that well. sense, yeah, the whole card is interesting for me for Be- Ryzen because I know all the fighters. Yeah, there's lots but, of good names. Um, as, far as, the, as far as the impact of each single fight, I think that the UFC, the the main and sub main event, or in fact the main card mm. altogether, like yeah, something like who yeah, like that me the excitement to watch that is just totally above of any of the rising fights. Mm. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I'm kind of, I'm, I am excited to see Asakura and Buga, and I'm definitely excited to see that lightweight tournament begin yeah. as well. So, yeah, there's, there's gonna, there's both, they're both really cool cards. So it's gonna be a fun weekend. Yeah, I'm looking forward um, to it. Have a nice, nice Sunday, nice yeah. cruising Sunday. I, I enjoy it. I get to watch Rising Live, which is always good. I think that's what always sometimes has a little bit of the edge. UFC, I'm watching it, trying to avoid spoilers. Um, whereas Rising, I can literally watch it live. Oh, so. That's right. That's right. I have a, a little bit of an edge there. Um. One topic I did want to get into very quickly before I let you go. Uh, John Jones versus Stipe Miocic. What do you think about that fight? 
Whew. That's going to be interesting, but I, I just I, I can't bet against John Jones. That guy's just amazing. Stipe yeah. does show uh, he has the best uh, style to beat John Jones, though. Mm-hmm. His striking is super good, and he, he he's a good wrestler. Like the, even DC couldn't take him down, yeah. Yeah, true. I have to be honest though. I hate this this matchmaking. I hate this fight so much. <laughs> oh really? Why? <laughs> because it's like why is Stipe getting the title shot? It makes no sense. It's it's just it makes no zero sense. His last fight was the loss against Nganu. That was way back in 2021. Before that, he fought DC in 2020. Like, in my eyes, you got Sergei Pavlich, who looks amazing. Aspinall looked really good. You got two guys there that should, in my eyes, get a title shot way ahead of Stipe. Aspinall, I, Aspinall just won, so he wasn't even in the discussion. True. But Sergei was. And Pavlich was definitely. Ahead. Sergei was, yeah. But Sergei really didn't beat like a, a Stipe or a. Who did he beat? There he beat Derek Lewis. Yeah, Derek yeah. Lewis is pretty much. Did he beat Curtis Blades too? He beat Curtis Blades as well, and he's oh, knocking well, yeah, these guys out. Be... To me, it should have been a Stipe and him, and the winner wins fights John Jones. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I'd be happy with that. That that makes sense. Yeah. I get yeah, the impression been... Jones has been asking for the Stipe fight though, hasn't he? So like, yeah. It's almost like he's picking his opponent there. Um, I think Jones doesn't want to fight that guy too. That guy's too dangerous. Yeah, he doesn't have enough of a name for John to take a to risk his legacy on. Yeah, I can see Jones retiring after beating Stipe. Yeah, well, he's saying he is. Oh, is he saying that? Yep. Oh, this I is his last heard. fight. Oh. Yeah, it's fucking bummer, man. That I know that's kind of like, oh shit. Yeah, she's gonna beat Stipe. Oh. He's gonna fight. I have a question for you. Oh. You know how John Jones is considered the GOT, right? Apparently, yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently, yeah. <laughs> so uh, what happens if he does lose to uh, Stipe? Does he lose that? <sighs> yes, probably, I think so. I, I think the, th- the thing with John Jones, right, is I always say John Jones is the greatest of all time with an asterisk. So in my eyes, he is the best because of who he's beaten. However, because there was like PDs and all the other and like overturn results because of drugs and all that, I always say there's an asterisk. Um, because who's the other argument? What George St. Pierre? Mighty Mouse. People say Khabib, I think that's a stretch. Yeah, Khabib, I didn't think he stretched his career long enough. Yeah, exactly. It's not long enough, right? Yeah. John St. Pierre would be the only one, yeah? Mm. I just think John Jones would deserve the title whether he lo- wins or loses one because he's not a heavyweight. Mm. His natural weight is the light heavyweight, and he's moving up to heavyweight to fight. So I don't think a loss would destroy his legacy. As far as the steroids test, he's not the only one taking steroids. True. True. I'm I'm pretty sure that eighty percent of all the UFC fighters have at one time taken a perma for wearing Hansen drug in their in their body. Hundred percent. True. So you know, Jones is the one who got caught. Some didn't get caught, some got banned. You know, I mean it's it's one of those things, man. I mean, mm-hmm. you go, you gotta be real um gullible if you really think that. All the per- people that's not getting caught has never taken steroids. You know, you know, like they have those drug-free bodybuilding events, <laughs> but those guys are massive. Yeah. They're only drug-free right now, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they all they all try the testosterone or some type of steroid or informing yeah. fancy, and I'm pretty sure most of the fighters have. True, especially back then, right? I guess. I guess. Yeah, and Jones just got caught, you know. And for me, I guess you know. For me, I've I've came up in a day and age that steroids was legal. Yeah. So I just don't feel like steroids is that big a deal as far yeah, as being a better mm-hmm. fighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So true. I don't think that taking steroids or being caught for steroids or the guys not that he fought didn't take steroids, I don't think that'll really determine 
how much of a better fighter you are. As far as uh, skill, you know, victories, the record, you know, fuck John Jones. I mean, yeah. by far, man. Of course, the Gustafsson fight was kind of questionable. Yeah. Yeah, he said some close decisions, but yeah, I don't yeah, think but that should go against him. Because it's not like every fight was a close decision. There's loads of finishes. But, but, but let me point out, he's a GOT in the sport of MMA. Not a GOT in the whole idea. Because if you're, if anybody is a GOT is pure, he's never got into trouble with the law. He's never got caught doing illegal substances. He's a, you know, he never beat his wife up, you know. <laughs> so who, who? as far as Saint Pierre, he's a oh, straight Pierre, up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if it's the greatest of all time, and you're talking about not just the sport, but as as far as character, integrity, mm -hmm. all around GSP, hundred percent, no, by far GSP or Mighty Mouse, if anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always historically <laughs> went GSP or Jones, but I think probably, uh, yeah, it's a toss up, isn't it? I I never got these people that say Khabib. It was like. Dude, did you watch the rest of MMA? Like, <laughs> like, like yeah, I think uh, I just think Khabib just cut it way too short, man. He he yeah. did himself injustice. Yeah, thirty or no, but he didn't. You know, Jones is technically undefeated. That that one blemish on his record doesn't count. Like, yeah, uh, that one that one doesn't count. What is that with uh, uh, Hamill, the, the deaf guy? Hamill, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Great that doesn't guy. count. Yeah, yeah, um, that doesn't count. I think so, Dana White was even talking about taking that off the record as a loss, yeah? I think they tried, but they couldn't for some reason. Like, I couldn't do it, yeah. I know. But cool. So, I mean, yep. that does it for MMA. Anything else you want to discuss? No, that's it. I know. Sounds like an exciting. I'm looking forward to this exciting week of uh, fights. And uh, maybe we can uh, do another one about how it went. Maybe. Oh, one thing I should say, because a lot of people are going to probably hit you up and be like, what about the bomb? What about the bomb you dropped last time? <laughs> um, the bomb any... is in progress. Bomb is in progress. So there you go. So if anyone wanted an Until update. Like, until the fuse is lit, <laughs> I've chosen to keep it under wraps. I mean, when, we, when I first talked about it, it looks like it looks like James is the wishy washy one, but it's not really James because I actually was okay with it going out, and then I thought, wait a minute, I don't want to jinx it, so I decided to pull it all back. Yeah, the, it wasn't a it was a, uh, a catch bait thing. It was really I was like, yeah, let's fuck fuck it. I'll tell I'll say it, and then after I said it, I think I messaged you and said, wait, you know what? Maybe we gotta pull this back. Literally halfway through. The episode is uploading on YouTube, <laughs> and you're like, "Actually, oh, no way. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh shit, okay." So it the it the, it the bomb got edited out, but uh, uh, yeah, it's. I think well, right when, now, right now, the bomb is being made, and once the fuse is lit, lit, um, I'll make we'll make sure we be the first ones to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's MMA, right? Anything can happen. So, hey, maybe the bomb doesn't go off. Maybe the bomb does. Who, who knows? So, we'll see. See what happens. Cool. Well, right. thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope everyone enjoys the fights. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll do a recap. And we'll talk to everyone soon. Shoo. Right on. Thanks for watching. Enjoy UFC 291, Super Rising. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. All right.